Good morning, everyone. Please stand for the choral introit. Blessed be the tie that binds, verses 1 and 2. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. It is a beautiful day. I hope uh, for all of you who had a Monday off, um, I'm sure you were to give thanks God for a short week. And for those of you who are retired, I'm sure you, you thank God you don't care if it's a short week. Uh, amen. I heard that. Amen. So, but I do hope you had an opportunity to spend Memorial Day with friends and family and remembering those uh, from our communities and our families who have gone on to serve on, on, behalf of our, our, on behalf of all of us. And so we give God glory and thanks for that opportunity to, to remember them. And it is June, um, and wow, well, the time is flying so quickly. Um, and so I pray that you, are, you, know, you have vacation plans or just want to spend time outside. Hopefully the weather is going to hold up and be nice and beautiful, and we all get to spend time in God's creation. Um, I'd like to, to turn to your bulletins. There's quite a few things in the bulletin. I'm only going to go through a few of them, um, but I want to point out uh, two things, three, a few things, excuse me. First of all, next week is uh, we're celebrating our seniors. Well, it's a senior recognition Sunday, but it's really our graduates, right? So we want to celebrate anyone who has accomplished a graduation, whether it's from kindergarten to first grade, fifth grade to sixth grade, or eighth grade to high school, or high school to college or college to a career, we want to celebrate them and we want to let them know how much we are, how proud we are of them and how much we love them and support them. So I'm hearing the list is getting quite extensive. So that is awesome. That's wonderful. So if you have a name, please by say this Tuesday, because we need to prepare for some things. So if you have a name and you've been waiting, please get it to uh, either email the office or Barry Zecker. Um, his email is in the bulletin. Please email us an image so we can put their lovely faces up on the screen. Um, and just a brief note as to what they're graduating from, like what school they're going to coming, what school they're, what school and grade, however you want to put that, that um, they are graduated from. And then, uh, like a, if it's a college graduate, what kind of program so we understand what they've been working on so so hard for the last few years. And so uh, again, we want to celebrate them. And please. I, it's not a requirement, but I'd love to see them. I'd love to meet them if I haven't had that chance. So invite them to come to church because we're going to celebrate them, right? And they, I want them to meet you, and I want them to know you. So if, if uh, we're going to put their names on the list, they don't have to be here. We're not, it's, it's not a requirement, but I would like you to make it that effort to invite them to come to the church so that they can get to meet the family that has been praying for them and caring for them. Um. Speaking of family, uh, June 24th, the UWF is hosting a covered, fam uh, covered dish family meal, um, and we are inviting Beans Church to this. So this is an opportunity for fellowship, to get to know one another, because I'm, I'm certain as you continue on, um, we'll be doing, uh, Comanville and Beans will be having quite a few um, opportunities to do ministry together. So it's an opportunity to get to know one another, and so that'll be June 24th at 4 p.m., um, is there a sign-up sheet for the covered dish? No? Okay. So um, if you need any information, please reach out to someone from the UWF, and they can give you more information if, if you wish to bring something um, and what, as, as to what to bring. Um, and then as we've been discussing with transition, um, there's several announcements regarding welcoming Pastor Manny. So 
One is that there is uh, there's some gift ideas that are in the bulletin. Um, please check that out and, and reach out to SPRC as they um, put together a welcome basket for him. And then July 9th is a welcome uh, reception downstairs in the, in the fellowship hall. So there is a sign-up sheet for that. So please make sure you sign up so that we know, uh, we can know what to expect, how many people to expect on that day. I expect all of you to sign up and I expect all of you to be there and welcome him as you have welcomed me into this church. Um, with that, I also want to briefly mention the community meal. As you've heard me say time and time again, you know, for me, that is, that is ministry in action, right? An opportunity to spend time in fellowship um, with, you know, often they're Christians from other churches, but sometimes they'll bring a friend and you never know where that person is in their faith journey. So it's an opportunity to show our hospitality, but to sit and spend time with someone, get to know them and hopefully be able to share your witness of Christ and hopefully lead to their acceptance of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So that's what ministry is all about. So, it, uh, you know, June 7th, chicken pot pie. I know it's a favorite. So I expect as, met to see as many of you as you can, as you can show up on that day. Um, and there'll be an activity afterwards that we, you know, again, fellowship time to spend laughing and, and hanging out together. Um, I think that's everything that I have. Oh, thank you so much. Excuse me. So June 25th, we are planning a hymn sing. Um, and so I want to remind you that there were cards that were printed are they, there in the back on the, in the narthex. Just jot down your favorite hymn so we know which ones that you would prefer to hear. And um, please give that feedback as soon as you can to either Ellen or Jill so that they can plan the hymn sing accordingly. Um, generally, it's the one or two verses per hymn so that we can get as many hymns in as possible. So uh, please fill out that card, and, um, and th that way they can plan that, that well. I think that's it. All right, so I want to um, just take this opportunity to give, to thank you for those of you who were able to make it last week. Thank you. It was emotional. It was fun. It was laughing. Lots of laughter. You know how much I love to laugh. Um, I, I do appreciate the, the, I hate to call it a bash, but, uh, you know, it was an opportunity uh, for us to, to, to talk and, and to say our goodbyes, even though I'm still here to the end of the month. But um, I do appreciate how much you celebrated my ministry here and, and Jezreel's ministry here as well. And, um, and I, as I've said more than once, you know, I do respect the rule and I will, you won't see me for about a year. But if we bump into each other, please make sure you come and say hello. Um, and if, you know, if there is an opportunity, um, you know, we will find a, a We'll, we'll discuss it with Pastor Manny, and we'll find ways to come back, um, especially for 175 years celebration. So that's still in the works. We've been planning it. Well, we've been discussing planning it. Um, hopefully that'll get going very soon. So, um, you know, hopefully I'll get to see you then. So if there's nothing else with that, let us bow our heads for a word of prayer and begin our worship. Heavenly Father, you have blessed us by promising to always be present with us, even in moments where fear seems to take over. Let your love overcome our fears and bind us tightly with you and towards one another so that others will see Christ in us. As we worship this morning, turn our hearts towards you such that our faith in your plans bring us comfort in the weeks to come. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able as we sing the first hymn, Open Our Eyes. Yeah. 
Amen. You may be seated. Next, we'll have special music from the choir, No Other Font. they return to our seats, please stand as you're able as we turn to the hymn, Just As I Am, Without One Plea. We're going to be singing verses two to four. Um, it's number 357 in the hymnal.
stand, you may be seated. This morning, um, before we get into, well, before we get into prayers, I want to acknowledge that Gary Wilson uh, left for Alaska on a mission trip this yesterday. And so he'll be gone all week. So we will lift him up in prayer and hope that it's an enriching experience. Um, as Jerry and Gary can tell you, mission trips seem adventurous. They seem like they're fun, but it's work, right? I mean, you're going, you're traveling, you're, you're taking time out of your schedule to serve other people, to go and, um, and, I've, and I've talked to quite a few people who've been on mission trips and they clean houses, they uh, rebuild floors and walls and depending on what the person's needs are. So it's work. It's, you take off work to go work. And so we give God thanks for that ministry because that is what we're called to do, right? We think about our local community, but Christ was clear. It's not to Judea. It's not to just Samaria, but to all the world we are, go, we are called to go and serve. And so when you can get that opportunity, we give God and we want to support him in our, with our prayers and resources. So um, we're going to lift him up in our prayers today, and I hope that you continue to lift him up in prayer as well. Um, we've had quite a few uh, friends and families of the church uh, in ministry, in, sorry, um, in the hospital for one thing or another. I want to lift up Dave Sellers. Uh, he's recovering from surgery at uh, the Lancaster Rehabilitation Hospital. Um, he's looking forward to visitors if you can make it, um, but he is recovering and seems to be doing very well. Um, got a prayer request for Lori's aunt, who's also recovering from surgery. We prayed for her for her surgery. She's recovering, hopefully very well. And so we'll continue to lift up, lift her up in prayer. Um, and continue prayer for Pat and Don Miller. We prayed for them, um, Pat for her dementia and Don for his cancer surgery. And um, I forgive me, Kana Booth, um, that uh, she will be having multiple surgeries this week um, in regards to uh, a tumors that are... Uh, she's going to have brain surgery. She's very young. Forgive, remind me what her age is again. Five? Five. Very young. And so uh, to, have, to be that young and to go through surgery um, means, one, there'll be very, there's a very good chance that her recovery will go very well because she's so young and energetic, I'm sure. But also to just um, be that young and have to go through this will be very challenging. So we want to lift her up. And Edie Harrington just returned home. Um, she called me to tell me that uh, she had surgery in her ankle, so the boot's off. And so she's got to learn how to walk again, as she put it. Um, but she is going in for another surgery, I think, at the end of June. So we want to continue to lift her up as well. Um, as for those of you who don't know, the, eating, the Harringtons are members of our church uh, who live in Conestoga. And we've been praying for them as, a, as an entire family uh, for quite some time now. Um, so with that, let us bow our heads and turn to the altar of God for prayer. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I also want to lift up Pastor Kevin Kresge from Mardikville. Uh, his family's going through some challenges with his son, Zip Chop, in Philadelphia. And so we want to lift up Kevin and, and his son and his wife, Iris, and their entire family um, as, they, as, you know, as, as his son gets treatment for, for his needs. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, O oh Lord bringing our concerns, O oh Lord, to you, also our joys, as we have members of our church who go out in service to others, O oh Lord, and we want to just send our prayers with them, that you provide them with all that they need and all the strength to do the work that is, that is required of them as they go on these trips. And for friends and family, O oh Lord, that are, are in the hospital recovering or on their way to for major uh, procedures, Lord, we just ask that your holy presence be with them, that your healing touch be upon them, that you give wisdom to the medical staff, and that you give comfort to those of us who support them and take care of them and, and just love them. Lord, we understand that there are no significant promises towards our when it comes to our bodies and, and our material needs, oh Lord. But you promise to be present with us, to give us comfort, to care for us spiritually, emotionally, and yes, physically. So Lord, we call upon you, asking for that care, asking for your healing touch, that Jesus Christ may be within us, O oh Lord, in a way that calls us to prayer, calls us to, uh, to love one another, 
so that no one who's going through these difficult times feels alone, that they know they are loved and supported, and that our fears and anxieties are just washed away with the comfort of the Holy Spirit, knowing that we can trust in you. So we give thanks this morning, O Lord, for all that you have done, all that you continue to do, and ask that you just be present in this church and in this community as we go forth in faith. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And as children of a living God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As I was praying, I was reminded, thank you, Holy Spirit, that we had an awesome time on Friday. For those of you who, who could not join us, we went axe throwing, which sounds dangerous, but was a lot of fun. And so uh, I just wanted to just acknowledge that, that we had a few young adults, friends and family of our church, who uh, may not come on a regular basis because of their work schedule or whatever's going on in their lives. But we had a good mix of people that showed up, which tells them that they are loved, that we think about them, that we care about them, and we want a relationship with them. So we're going to continue to do that. And as frustrating as it might be that they don't come to church, I think it's very important that we keep showing up where they are so that they feel that connection and one day feel like, you know, I want to go to church today because I sat, I sat with this person and talked to them last week, right? So I want to acknowledge that, that we've been trying very hard. It's really hard to get them all in the same room, get them on the same schedule. But every little thing that we can do, when you see those little announcements come up that we're going to go do this or go do that, show up, right? You know, you didn't want to ax throw. That's fine. You could, watch, you could have watched. It was a lot of fun to make fun of each other. We were making fun of each other all night. And so, um, because it's, it's, see, it's a lot harder than you think it is. Um, and so, uh, but yeah, I just want to acknowledge that. And, and also, um, someone that you, you all know, but I got to meet for the first time is Jill's grandson, Kenyon. Uh, he was there and we celebrate, we're going to celebrate his graduation next week, but uh, hopefully he's coming. He said he might come. Um, but also I just want to acknowledge it's his birthday. And so, um, you know, because he's not here, we're not going to make him go, you know, we're not going to sing, you know, get, uh, to, uh, make him go through that a little bit. Um, but next week, you know, when he's here, first of all, he's going to see some face, familiar faces. That's awesome. But also make a point, and across the board, anyone who comes next week that, you, that doesn't come regularly, just make a point to say thank you for coming and, and to acknowledge them, right? Make a point to go and let them know how glad you are that they are here so that they feel like this is part of their family, right? We're, we're not... Yes. Yes. Yeah, he's quite a bit taller than the last picture that I saw him, saw of him. So, um, so yes. So as as they come, you know, him and anyone else who comes next week, um, let them know that we care about them and that we want to show them the same hospitality that we show one another. So, again, thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me to to acknowledge that. Um, next, we're going to have our scripture reading. If Pat uh, Pat Collins is going to be coming forward, she's going to be reading from Second Corinthians chapter thirteen. Verses 5 through 9, if you're following along in our Pew Bible, it's in the New Testament, which is the second half of the Bible, on page 172. Examine yourselves to see whether you are the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong, not so that people will see that we have stood the test, but so that you will do what is right, even though we seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. We are glad whenever we are weak, but we are strong in our prayers in the family, and that you may fully be restored. Here end of the reading for today. <clears throat> Amen.
Amen. So we have been in the last few weeks, and we're going to continue talking within the context of the transition that's coming up. I, I don't want that to be lost in what we're saying. And so one of the things that I know of transitions, if, you, if you've uh, been through different types of transitions in life, you will know that there's often a lot of questions, a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear because of the unknown, right? And so what we want to do is not, what we're going to do today is not look at the questions themselves, because that's normal. We should have questions. And we're not going to necessarily dive into the anxiety, because again, that's normal, right? But we're going to talk about what we should do with those things, right? We're going to talk about how we can't let fear of the unknown and the anxiety that comes with it to dictate our actions. We're not going to let, we're not going to let just, uh, uh, try to think how to say this. We're not going to let our, our own emotions lead to misunderstandings, situations that are uncomfortable, and more so in a lack of faith in one another. What we're going to talk about, what I hope that, that we gain from this reading and from the sermon this morning, is that in those moments, when fear starts to creep up, when you feel disconnected or anxiety come up when you're hearing something or seeing something that becomes unfamiliar to you, that in those moments, we stop and we pray and we trust in the Lord, right? We trust that the Holy Spirit is present here. You've been through these transitions before. If you've been in the church long enough, you've seen some pastors come and go. And I, I don't mean that to be flippant. I'm seeing, but the reality is, is that pastors in the United Methodist Church are moved. We've been through this before. And guess what? The church continues on. You continue to serve. You continue to worship. So don't let anxiety get the better of you and cause you to do something that you're going to regret. Or even worse, say something that you're going to regret. But trust in God. Let God work in you and through you to hold things together and so that we can stay connected and faithful to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God Almighty, as we come into, as we begin this month of June, which is the typical month of transition in the United Methodist Church. We must face the end of a period in the life of the church in one ministry and, and turn towards the beginning of a new ministry here beginning July 1st, O oh Lord. That's difficult. That's challenging for everyone. And so as we get closer to that date, as our discomfort grows, as our lack of understanding of things that might come up, uh, might, might pop up, oh Lord, help us to remember that at the end of the day, we are all called to serve you. That the mission of this church is not for us to be comfortable. It's not for us to necessarily always feel good but in those moments to turn to you, O oh Lord, and be a place, a refuge for those who have fears and anxieties, a place of comfort and peace, a place where we can lift one another up in prayer and support one another through all things that, that, we, that we are challenged with. So today, O oh Lord, open our ears and our hearts to your message and let that carry us through to the end of the month, showing that you are always faithful. You are always present. And that is through your love, the love of Jesus Christ, that we can bear one another up and support one another until we get to the other side of transition and we feel comfortable again. We ask all of this in your holy name. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. 
As I've mentioned before, um, in, the, in the two letters of the Corinthians, First and Second Corinthians, Paul is dealing with a new church, a church that he has planted, and then he left and, and for it to grow and because he, he was an evangelist, right? He wasn't a pastor. Paul was an evangelist. And he went to various towns sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and starting churches and usually picking leadership that, that would um, continue to lift that church up and to help it to grow and to help serve the people that, are, um, that worship there. And if you read all of, the, all of the book of Corinthians, there's a lot of theology based in the books, the, the two letters, because there's challenges and issues in Corinth. Corinth is a very diverse town in Greece, very close to Athens, right, almost right on the Mediterranean. Because, it's, because of its diversity, because of its location, there's lots of people coming and going through Corinth. And so you're not seeing one group of people in this church. You're seeing a lot of different types of people who have lots of different ideas. And as the gospel is spreading, as the gospel is being shared in this church, there's people who are coming from other traditions, other ideas, and maybe they've heard the, the gospel of Jesus Christ before they got to Corinth, and now they're in Corinth and they're hearing this, they're hearing how God is moving in this church, and they're they're, they're they have their own ideas. Let's just put it that way. They have their own ideas as to what is the cause of that or how, how God is manifesting in the church. And it's causing some issues because there's some people who remember Paul and, they're, and they, they think of Paul as the evangelist that brought them into the church. And then you have a new pastor and he's bringing new people in. And those people are becoming very connected with Apollos, who we talked about before. Right, Or there's people who heard Peter preach, or there's people who heard other uh, people preach, and they're coming into church, and they're all talking about who, who, is, um, who their, their allegiance is or who's the, why the reason they came to faith is, you know, in terms of preaching. And it's just causing some issues to the point where they're even questioning who Paul is. Like, not, not necessarily who he is. They know who he is, but they're questioning his faith, they, um, and especially if they know his background, right? He wasn't always a Christian. He actually, start, he actually started his career by persecuting Christians. So imagine what that backstory, bringing that backstory into the church can, can do for people who had high regard for Paul. So here we are at the end of the second book of Corinthians. And in this chapter, Paul's letting them know that he's coming back to talk to them. I'm telling, he's basically I'm telling you in advance that I'm coming. And here's what we're going to talk about, right? So you got to read the whole chapter to, to get that, right? And so some of what he's going to talk about is this conflict, especially those who've been making accusations against him. He says, we're going to, we're going to, talk, he, we're going to head, we're going to go head on into this discussion because I don't want you to create problems, but I also don't want you to feel like you're in a church that doesn't care about you or where the leadership isn't listening to you. So he's going to tackle these issues head on. But he's prescribing something before this happens. And this is where we're picking up in our reading. He starts off with, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? And then he tacks on, unless, of course, you fail the test. Now, that sounds very harsh. It actually is very harsh. And for Paul, I can only, only imagine, this is part of the problem when you're trying to lead from afar, right? He's not in Corinth. He's not with them every day. And so I'm sure there's a lot of frustration on their part and a lot of frustration on his part. But what I want you to know is as we go on, this is, um, I'm going to skip to verse 9, and I'm going to bounce around a little bit. But I'm going to skip to verse 9. It says, we are glad whenever we are weak, but you are strong, and our prayer is that you may be fully restored. What he's saying here is, I'm acknowledging our problems. I'm acknowledging that we're having issues. And what I want you to do by examining yourself is to take a deep look at why you feel the way you feel. Why does your fear and anxiety, how, how is that being manifested? What is causing 
these fears? What is causing these, these, these things that you're saying or, or the way that you feel? Make sure, make sure that your faith is in Christ and not in yourselves is what he's saying without saying, right? Because that often is what is our, that is often is the cause of our fears when we lose focus on Christ and start shifting our thinking to the problem in front of us and how it affects us? Or do we have enough resources to deal with this situation? Or do I have enough time? Or, do, you know, whatever, do I have enough emotional capacity to deal with this situation? It all, our, 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 our eyesight and our focus shifts towards us and not the Christ in us that empowers us and gives us the ability to do, to do the things we need to do, to do ministry even when things get difficult. So Paul, even though his words seem harsh, what he's trying to say is, I want you to grow in your faith. I want you to be mature in your faith. Because as we said last week, when he was dealing with the situation between him and Apollos, at the end of the day, your faith shouldn't be in the pastor. Your faith should be in Jesus Christ. Because that is the source of our strength as a church. That is our purpose. That's what binds us together. Jesus Christ does. So that's where we need to put our focus and our attention. On Christ. So what you need to do as an individual is examine yourselves as these things come up. I have not heard that. I have not heard what I'm about to say here in Colemanville, but I have seen it in other churches where people quietly get upset about something that's said from the pulpit, a decision made by the leadership, or something along those lines. They, when I say quietly, is they get upset and they don't tell anybody they're upset. And then it starts to show itself by they withhold they're, they're giving. They don't show up for, for ministry opportunities. They, they start to withdraw from the congregation instead of dealing with the anxiety. They, they avoid the conflict. And usually within a few weeks or a few months, they actually leave the church. They've never given the opportunity for anyone to acknowledge or even address their concerns. They act out of fear and not love. And so what Paul again is saying is when these things come up, when you start to feel the way you feel, take a moment and examine your motivations. Think about what is driving you to feel the way you feel or driving you to the decision that you're making. Is it Christ-like? Is it what God requires of you? Or is it just you trying to manage the situation on your own. Let's talk about fear for a little bit. In 1 John chapter 14, verse 18, Scripture says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Right? Fear and love are, are contrasted here as polar opposites. If you love someone, you should not be afraid to ask questions of them. You should not be afraid to, to confront them and say, you hurt my feelings. You should not be afraid to say, I don't understand or I disagree with that decision. Can you help me understand why the church made that decision? Or go to the new pastor and say, I don't understand why you changed something. Can you help me understand why? That is what love requires of us. To be willing to listen to one another, to confront our emotions, to confront our challenges in a loving way so that nothing comes between us in our relationship and our relationship with with our relationship with each other and with God through Jesus Christ. Right? As I said earlier, anxiety and fear are normal human emotions. But when we let them dominate our thinking and our behavior and, and 
how we do things. It creates barriers and walls with the people that we love. And those barriers, barriers then create walls between us and God. And so what we need to do is turn to one another in love and say, we need to have this tough conversation so that we can continue to love one another. Or, let's be honest, we may, we may have people in our lives, in our church, that we've been harboring resentment against for years, and we just don't love them anymore. But Christ is saying we are love. That is, what, that is how we know each other. In John chapter 13, verses 3 through 35, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he says, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. I often think, I did a whole sermon series on the apostles, but I don't think I addressed one thing. I often think about 12 men, right? 12 men, at times when we read them in scripture, they sound like kindergartners, right? They, they could whine and complain. But 12 men who commit to live with one another following Jesus around for two and a half to three years. You know, you know, if any of you have brothers, well, and I know sisters can be this way too, but if you have siblings, and I'm sure they got as close as siblings, I don't think I could be in a room with my sibling more than a few hours. Imagine days and then weeks and then months. It's challenging. I'm sure Jesus gave them this commandment because he knows once he's out the door and he's not over, over you know, he's not supervising them anymore, they're going to start acting like children again. They're going to start acting like brothers who love one another but beat each other up or fight over the silliest little thing. And so what he's telling them is you need to show the Christian love towards one another. You need to show what Jesus taught them, they need to show that and teach others. Please know that people are watching this church. Please know that we are known in this community. And that what we say out there and what we say to one another in here doesn't stay in here. People hear it. People know. And so if we want to be a church that follows scripture and follows Jesus Christ, then the words that come out of your mouth should be words of love. They should be words of encouragement, words that lift up one another. Doesn't mean that if you have concerns or questions that you just you know, put them away and say, well, I'll never get the answer. Or I'll... No, that means that you ask those questions in love. And if someone asks you a question in love, that you respond in love. And, excuse me, and that every question, every action, every decision is made to show the love of Jesus Christ to one another. So as things change, we ask ourselves, how does, that, how does that decision show the love of Christ, not only to each other, but to the community outside our walls? Right? You, this is a church. I'm going to be frank. We can't have an event in a church without at least one person wondering, why are we doing this event? Even if we've been doing it for the last 10, 20 years, right? It's just people, right? When you get a group of people together, everybody has an opinion, and somebody often has an opinion opposite to the rest of the group. When someone asks that question, you shouldn't say, and you've heard me say this, the, the one thing that drives me bonkers is when you say, well, we've always done it that way. No. The answer should be, we do this because this is how we demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ to other people. And we should be able to talk specifically about that. That's why I keep talking about the community meal. It's not just food. It's good food, but it's not just food. It's demonstrating hospitality and love towards others. That's why we do our spring fling and our fall fest. Right? It's not about our reputation as being the church who does things. It's about how we can connect with people. And it should always, always come back to 
How can we demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ to others? Why? Because there is no fear in love. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 8 to 10. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Love compels us to serve one another, to take care of each other. And what does it mean when it says love, love covers over a multitude of sins? Because we are people. We sin. We lie. We get angry. We get upset. We snap at each other. But if I don't feel like you love me, I will take that personal if you snap at me. But if you love me, you have shown that you love me, and I know that you love me, if you snap at me, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, they're having a bad day. What can I do to serve you? How can I help you? Do you see the difference? Do you see the difference? That when you invest in love in one another, that you build this, this repository of love, that when we fall, when we make mistakes, when we sin, because it's inevitable as humans, that your brothers and sisters in Christ will happily, happily lift you back up again and walk with you and say, we can walk through this together. We can recover from this failure together. But if you don't build that repository of love, if you don't invest in, other, in love in other people when you fall, what do we do as humans? Wow. Just walk away, right? We don't do anything to help them up. Often we feel they deserve it. But that's not what scripture tells us to do. We shouldn't behave that way toward one another. So when those moments come up, examine yourself. Make sure that the love of Christ is in you and that the love of Christ is what drives you to do the things that you do for each other and for our community so that our ministry can thrive. Again, not because we're popular, not because we're, you know, but because we are demonstrating the love of Christ towards one another. When you do the right thing for the right reasons, right? That's what Paul's talking about in verses, um, in verse uh, eight or verse seven and eight, right? That even if you look like you fail the test, but if you're doing things for the right reasons, you still pass, right? We don't worry about what other people think. We worry about what God is, is, is thinking and asking us to do. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for truth. If we are walking as Christ has called us to walk in truth and love, then everything you do will be the right thing. Everything you do will be for his glory. Everything you do will be because the Holy Spirit has led you to this moment. Not because, and so we have to be careful that we can't allow our actions to be driven by fear. So I'm going to say it again. Examine yourselves over the next few weeks, months, years. Understand what motivates you and why you might react to a certain change, decision, whatever is coming up for the future of this church. And ask yourself, am I afraid because I think that we're going to be, um, that, that we're, am I afraid because this is going to impact me? Or am I afraid because this is going to impact the ministry of the church? Right? That's a valid concern. That's a valid question. And so everything that you do from here on out, make sure you do it in love. That, the, that we become identified as Christians, not because we yell at each other, because we disagree, because... Because there's some people who think that of us, especially the United Methodist Church right now. We're not known for all the wonderful things that we do. We're known for this disagreement that we're having right now as a church. That's what we're known for, for people outside our walls. So let them know us by our love. Amen.
in response to God's holy word, excuse me, let us give thanks for the offering that we received this morning. Heavenly Father, we offer our gifts in gratitude this morning. Gratitude that you have loved us before we could even understand what love truly is. And that love of the love of Jesus Christ continues to bind us to the people in this church that we have grown to love over the years. But as things change, as things, as new ideas come to the, come into our ministry, oh Lord, fear and anxiety may start to creep its way in. So we ask that you just continue to be present with us by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you empower us to do your work and to focus on the love of Jesus Christ that compels us to do ministry here in Comanville. May these gifts be tools that make the transformation of the world a reality, that all who know this church know the love of Christ. We pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able as we sing the closing hymn, the servant song, verses 1 through 4. As change comes, do not fear, but cling to Christ's love toward one another. Be known by his love as you go forth to live out the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen.